I want to tell you guys that yes, I have accidentally farted before. It's not the end of the world, but it's also not my favorite moment in life. Hey girl, hey! I was gonna do my makeup with you guys, but it's honestly so hard trying to talk and be coherent and do makeup. Shout out all beauty gurus. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about hair removal. If you don't care about hair removal, you probably don't need to be here, right? <laughs> but if you do, we're gonna chat about it. So I'm gonna just start with what I've done, what works, and as a plus size girl, a, you know, a big girl with a belly and everything, the positions that I've had to get into and hold and maintain various positions and stuff while getting waxed, what the process is like getting lasered, etc. right? So I kind of wish there was a video like this for me when I was first trying to do these things because I was kind of embarrassed and I felt like, oh my gosh, this person's gonna hate having to like wax me or do this to me or whatever because my body's so big and I got folds and I got this and I got that. So I'm just here to kind of clear that kind of stuff up and give you the cost breakdown and ultimately the effectiveness and I will show you where my hair growth is at right now because I haven't gotten rid of it in like three weeks but we'll get to that in a minute. Hey girl, popping in because I actually finished filming this video and now I'm coming back to tell you that I have inserted a Q&A at the end of the video because I ended up asking you guys on Instagram and you had some pretty good questions that clearly I hadn't covered. Stick around to the end if you wanna see the Q&A portion of this video. The areas of my body that I remove hair from are basically my legs from ankle to hip. Normally just right above the knee, okay? But occasionally I'll go all the way up. Then my cooch, so that's just like full, full hair removal, okay? All of it. Everything, inside, outside, crack to crack, front to back. And then we have underarms, and then I used to do my face as well, so I would do upper lip, and I would do my eyebrows. I got my eyebrows microbladed four years ago. Since that day, I quit doing anything. Those are the places where I remove hair from my body. Obviously, the first thing that I would do and use was just shaving, just traditional shaving. I would say, on average, I'm probably spending, you know, I was probably spending $50 a year on shaving. That just includes, you know, a couple razors and some shave cream, because I like the cream where you barely need a teeny tiny bit. That's what I used to shave. And the positives of shaving obviously are the cost and how quick and easy it is to do it. I would say the downsides of shaving are one, the razor burn, because that would definitely happen in the cooch area, and my underarms. My legs usually did not get razor burn. Two was the regrowth was super fast. I could shave in the morning, and by the nighttime, it was already getting a little bit prickly. Also, I would get ingrown hairs like a mother on the cooch, which sucked. And it's something that time-wise I have to do regularly. So for me personally, I would shave like three times a week. Um, I like to have extremely smooth skin, which you're gonna find out here. So those are the positives of shaving and the negatives of shaving. And then of course with shaving pain-wise, there's really no pain associated with shaving. It's just, you know, the regrowth can be a little itchy or whatever sometimes. Shaving is shaving. Everyone's probably done it at this point if you're here. So you also have the option of doing like a cream, like a hair removal cream. So like Nair, etc. cetera, Veet I think has one as well. I was never a huge fan of this because I do have sensitive skin. So again, price-wise, it's similar. It costs a little bit more than shaving when I was doing it. I didn't like that it didn't really get everything off for me, and if it did get everything off, it left behind a burning red patch of skin. So I'm not a big fan, but I will say that like my daughter, I, I let her use it like um, to get like underarms or whatever. We just do that, and it's a wash off one in the shower, and it works really well for a person who is super duper new due to any kind of hair removal. It didn't work for me, my skin was too sensitive. After that, I tried an epilator. Do you guys remember like five years ago when there was this brawn epilator that like every YouTuber and the mama was sponsored by and I was like yes absolutely Claudia I will be getting that up later okay you make it look so easy hell to the nah no absolutely not veto that thing hurt hurt pain wise max for me that was the most horrendous, horrific experience was using an epilator. And an epilator, if you don't know, it basically yanks all the skin out, or all the skin, it does take some damn skin out. No, it, it yanks the hair out, so as you kind of move it across your um, leg or whatever, uh, it rips it out of your body at one time. And it hurts like a mother, but beyond that, the cost for me, I think I spent somewhere between like $250 and $300 on the epilator. That's the final cost, that's it for, their, you know, for that device until that device breaks but it left behind 
serious irritation. I got some incredible, incredibly horrible, not razor burn, but just ingrowns. It was super red, it was super itchy, it hurt like a mother, man. And I, there was no possible way I was ever gonna be able to do that on any more you know, sensitive bits. So I started with the legs. There was no way I was gonna be able to do it on my underarm or my crotch. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well you build up tolerance to it, da 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 da. It's no from me, dog. Absolutely not, never again, not for the rest of my life. I would never, that's a torture device. Highly don't recommend, point blank period, no. Next up after that, in 2015, I decided to try out waxing. I was super afraid to wax because I thought like, again, it was like, you know, oh, I'm embarrassed, my cooch is big, and I have a belly, and what kind of positions are they gonna put me into? And let me just dispel all that for you guys right now, okay? They don't care, they don't care. And if they care, try a different waxer, okay? They, don't worry about it. They're, this is their job, they're seeing a cooch every day, they don't care. Now. As far as the positions, I'm gonna show you the exact positions that I had to get into. So the very first time that I went, I did get a Brazilian. I have had my legs waxed a few times. To me, it's not worth the cost, which is why I didn't continue to do it over the years. So in 2015, when I started waxing, I did not stop waxing until 2021. So I definitely have experience there. And for the first time when I went, I laid down on the table and I just laid back. I went into this butterfly position where you put your feet together and then you kind of, you know, push your, your thighs down a little bit just to kind of open yourself up a little bit. And then for me, the waxer just asked that I kind of lift my stomach a little bit so that she was able to get in there, you know, nice and easy and use both of her hands as opposed to using one of her hands to move my skin out of the way. So um, she did use her hand to like, you know, make my skin more taut, um, like by my thigh and stuff, but I did hold my belly up the whole time. So when it came to wax, Waxing me from the front, that's pretty much the way I did it every single time. I would lay back, I would butterfly, I'd hold my belly, and then that's how we would do the front. And then for the back, there are a few different options for the back. So every now and again, a waxer would have me put my legs together, hold my knees, and pull them up towards my chest. This was not my favorite way to do it. It's not super comfortable. Because I have a belly, it's hard for me to get my legs up that close to my chest. So I would request not to do this position. So then we have a couple of other options. You can flip over and you can lay flat on your belly and then with your hands you're gonna put them behind you and you're gonna grab onto your own butt cheeks and you're kind of gonna spread them for the waxer now there were times I they didn't ask me to spread them um, but if I didn't then the wax was not gonna be as good you know what I mean like they wouldn't be able to access as much as they could if I was actually assisting them and holding my booty cheeks open and now normally you're laying like this for about two minutes, okay? It does not take that long to wax a butt. Oh, with waxing also, if I was gonna get my underarms and my Brazilian done, then when I got there, I would take off my top. I always had like a tank top or something on because I knew where I was going. And I would get my underarms waxed and then I would get off the table, I'd put my top back on or I'd pull my top down or whatever. And then I would take off my bottoms. After I did my bottoms, I would put my bottoms back on, obviously. I would take, you know, drawers off and everything. You're totally naked there. And then the cost breakdown with waxing for me was basically with tip I was paying about hundred and twenty dollars a month and I had gotten my my upper lip wax for many years and I got my eyebrows waxed for many years and it was like 20 and 20 for both of those um, but I stopped doing that because my upper lip would get irritated so now I just use one of these little things if I ever feel like um you know taking the hair off I just go in and and boom, that's it. Uh, same with my eyebrows, I can just kind of go in between and you know, I can do a little swipe on the bottom or a little bit on the top. It's nothing serious, I've had this for like five years, it was like $10, it's a Phillips little shaver. Link it if I can find it. For waxing, I was paying about $120 a month. I had to go every four weeks because that was the best time as far as the hair regrowth went. And if I went earlier than every four weeks, I would end up with serious, extra serious ingrowns. If I waited longer, it hurt more. So pain level for me with waxing, the part that hurts the most of like when you're getting your cooch done is when they start doing the inside like towards the top, okay? That hurts like a mother, all right? And all I would ever do is like, I have various waxers tell me to do different things. I eventually found one that I really liked. Her name was Sonata. She's at the European Wax Center in Naperville. If you guys are from here, the one on 75th Street. She's the bomb, she's efficient. She's very fun to just be in there and chatting with or whatever. So that hurt the most, but as far as pain goes, it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. It never stopped hurting. There was never a point where it didn't hurt. I never became immune to the pain of it, but it was very quick. When she would be about to pull, I would just breathe out 
when I could feel that she was about to do it, I would go <sighs> just like that, okay? And it just helped to ease the pressure for a second. So that's what helped me, that's what worked for me. I would get my underarms done as well and those just do not hurt at all and they take like no time at all. So for me, waxing, the whole process of doing basically Brazilian and underarms took like 25 to 30 minutes, 30 minutes let's say, assuming they're not running behind or anything. And then for me, the drive was an hour, okay? So in a year, I was spending, what, 30 minutes? I was spending six hours on a table in one year, um, but I was spending an additional 12 hours driving back and forth. So that's 18 hours for the year. It's $120 a month roughly, which equates to $1,440 a year. Girl, if my math is wrong, just know I'm not here to teach it to you. That wasn't horrible, but it sucked that it was constant. And when quarantine hit, what was I gonna do? I had to just bust out my trimmer and kind of like trim down there um, because the ingrowns were, you know, I can't shave, like my crotch is just not designed for that. Now, as far as ingrowns and stuff go, it did not matter how much I exfoliated, it did not matter how breathable my draws were, it didn't matter, I was gonna get ingrowns. And the ingrowns from waxing were something else, honey, because waxing yanks it out. So when it comes back, it's not coming back prickly. That was wonderful. The hair never comes back prickly because you're not slicing it off like you are with, with shaving, okay? You are yanking it out. So the top is always gonna be nice and soft, but the problem with it being, you know, a thinner, softer kind of hair and it not being prickly and thick is that it can't always get through the surface. So that's why you have to exfoliate, 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 and try to, you know, let it get through the surface of the skin. So because of that, the ingrown hairs hurt like a mother, and then having ingrown hairs on your crotch every now and again, even if you are not boning anybody, every now and again, you're gonna be like, is it an ingrown or is it something else? I will say that obviously I kept up waxing for six years, so it was nice waxing. The, the biggest downside I would say besides the pain, besides the cost, besides the ingrowns, is that you have to let the hair grow back. So I would get waxed for two weeks, that'd be pretty much hairless, and then I had to let the hair grow back for two weeks. Only half of the year was I spending it really hairless, which is what I was going for. Enter the Kenzie. So then I started using an IPL. So I had been sponsored by Kenzie. I had seen it and everything, but when they sent it to me, I was like, all right, I'm gonna try this for real, for real. If I don't like it, I'm not gonna talk about it. I did end up liking it because you only have to do it once a week. Plug it in and it works with light basically. And so it's kind of zapping at your, you know, the darker hair that's beneath your skin. And if you do it every single week for months, then you will begin to notice your hair decreasing. So it's not lasering, but it does help decrease how much hair you have. The problem with the Kenzie for me was that I would be inconsistent with it because I had to rely on myself to do it. I wasn't paying to go somewhere. I wasn't making an appointment to go do something. I had to rely on myself to do it. And I was shaving in between, of course. So it was um, effective, slowly effective, but the downside for me was the fact that I couldn't keep up with it because I just wasn't able to do it. I would set alarms and stuff, and for a few months there, it was working. Like, I was able to continue to do it, and I did see a decrease in the hair that was coming out, but it wasn't, cons I wasn't consistent enough for it to be a long-term solution for me, and then I was just shaving in between. So the cost on that, I wanna say Kenzie's like 200 bucks. Oh yeah, I wanna say it was like $200. So it's just a one-time cost again, and it has like, a bazillion pulses in it, so it's gonna stick around for a long time, and then they had a warranty and stuff on it too. So that's an option, and the pain level was minimal. It really wasn't anything, every now and again, if you put it on level five, and you were like on your shin or somewhere where there wasn't much fat, then it gave you a little zap. And uh, it was not horrible, but it wasn't exactly a pleasant experience either. I never did put it on my cooch, and I never did put it on my underarms because I just preferred to try everything on my legs first. I've also tried at-home waxing, at-home, you know, sugaring, whatever, like, did I do sugaring? Or was it all wax? I think it was all wax. Um, I've never tried sugaring, although a lot of people had recommended it because they say that it hurts a lot less, so I don't have any experience with that. Then, after the Kenzie, I was like, you know what? I think I want real laser, but I was always afraid of the pain, and I was once again afraid of the positions I was gonna be put into to get laser done. So, I ended up going to this place, it's called Smooth Solutions. I'll link them down below if you guys are in the area. And uh, the cost on it, she has a full cost breakdown on the website. So, lasering places usually sell like a certain amount of sessions 
for her at this particular place, she would sell a certain amount of time. So I decided to do a two year package, which meant I could go in and get it done every time that I felt like I needed it done. And she said on average it takes about eight sessions. So that's why she was like, a lot of places sell you six sessions, like that's the package, she said, but typically you need eight sessions, so it makes more sense to just sell you two years and then you fit the eight sessions in as you see that you need them. So I said, okay, cool, I'll do eight sessions. This particular place, if you guys are in the area, I'm sure most of you are not, so I don't wanna dive too deep, but they also offer membership packages where you pay monthly to be able to go and get you know whatever services you want done, so just know that. But anyway, the full legs at this place was $2,575. The full Brazilian was $1,450. And then she had a deal going on for me where I was able to then get the underarms for free and the underarms for two years, all of the sessions you would need was $700. So you can take that out. Ended up costing me roughly $4,000 for two years. $4,000 divided by 24 months, let's say I'm paying 160 bucks roughly for all of these uh, sessions, right? With lasering, I wear a tank top or something so that they have access to my underarms. And then on the bottom, the first time I wore just a really like easy to move thong and she just had me move it around. I didn't have to take it off. The second time I went, I had a different person do it and she gave me one of those like medical looking thongs, the ones that are just sort of like one size fits everybody but it fits us all horribly. So she had me put that one on and I would just lay flat basically and then I would kind of like flip my legs out a little bit for her to do like my inner legs when she was doing the laser. And then when it came to my crotch, I would again uh, butterfly and that would kind of open it up a little bit. I would again hold my belly while doing laser. And with lasering, I would say the downside for the crotch at least is that it's not going all the way in. Now, it's a little frightening because I don't want somebody to like accidentally, you know, laser my so um, <laughs> I'm sure like that's not a, a thing really. But anyway, they don't go all the way in because like for me, you, you'd have to go in. They don't do that so the hair still grows right there on the inside. But that's the front position for the back. I just flip over and lay flat. I like have my arms up here and they don't need me to open or touch or do anything back there. Um, and they just handle the back of my legs and uh, my butt and they'll do like my actual booty cheek as well. So then obviously for the underarm, same. You just lift your arm, easy peasy, and it just doesn't take that long. Now as far as the pain goes with lasering, I will say that it doesn't all hurt and it really depends on how targeted it is, how, you know what I mean? Like, like the first time around, it didn't hurt that bad. The second time, it hurt more. I thought that the worst pain was gonna be my crotch. It doesn't feel pleasant. I'm not even gonna give you a pain scale because we're all different, but if you can handle waxing, I feel like you can handle lasering just fine. The underarm actually hurt. It hurt a lot and my shins hurt. Uh, that part was like, ooh, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> Stop it. But you can put lidocaine on. So you can get like topical like Aleve or just lidocaine or whatever it's called. I forget what it's called. I think it's called lidocaine. And it's a spray or it's a lotion or whatever. And you can put that on like 30 minutes or an hour beforehand. And it kind of helps to numb those areas up. So that helps. Ultimately, it's just not that bad. The whole process for me takes about 45 minutes for them to do my entire leg. I got big legs. For them to do legs, cooch, and underarms takes like 45 minutes and it's like it's like 10 minutes from the crib. So it takes less time because I'm going less often. So I've currently gone about two, two to three months in between sessions. I'm about to go do another session. I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I filmed it, but I don't want to dedicate a whole other video to hair removal. But maybe in a vlog, I do have a vlog channel if you guys are not familiar. Now the beauty of laser is that that stuff works. After the first time I went, you just shave beforehand, they hit it, they, you know, they zap it and then it stops it from growing. Dude, after the first time that I did it, like a week later, I was able to just pull the hair out. It wasn't like pluck it. It was like literally I could just go like this and the hair would fall out of my legs, it'd fall out of my crotch, it'd fall out of my armpits and I was like, this is crazy! And I noticed a huge reduction. I would say at least 50, 60% hair reduction 
just after the first session. I went back once I noticed it growing in a little bit more and I shaved it off. We did it again and she said it's good for you to wait until you actually see hair coming back so that then we can like kind of you know target the areas where it's really coming back and all that. So I went back, I did it again. Again about a week later all my hair was falling out. I have noticed probably like a 70, 80, 80% 80 reduction in my hair growth and I'm going to show you guys in my underarm um, because I haven't shaved my underarms in three weeks and so I'm going to show you guys exactly what it looks like. Before I do that I just want to say the downside besides the cost because yes it's expensive but it is more long term so you kind of have to decide how to weigh that on your own. They do have payment plans and stuff like that if that's an issue for you. Once again though the downside is ingrowns. So if maybe there's still a hair that's you know fighting back it wants to come back to the surface or maybe it was already coming out or whatever. Um, I get ingrowns in random places with lasering. I'll get one like on my outer thigh and I'm like what the hell? Like I ain't never had that before. It, they're in more random places. They're not as bad as shaving. They're not as bad as the epilator. I was gonna call it an epilator because that's what my mom had. They're not as bad as the epilator. They're not as bad as waxing. They're not as bad as shaving, but they're in random places. And so that's what kind of threw me off. I also got really irritated after the second time that I did it because she kind of upped it a little bit. The irritation went away after about two to three days. Um, but that's also a possibility as well. You have to kind of, you know, if you have sensitive skin, it might, happen. I'm going to tell her next time and she'll probably go a little bit lighter on those areas. So anyway, let me show you what my armpit looks like, girl. Ah, oh, dang, I should have put like a cute little bra on or something today. Nope. Oh, one other huge perk is that the darkness in my underarms has really gone away. That I did not expect to happen, but it has really, really, really lightened up. So this is my underarm and this is after three weeks of not shaving. I'm gonna zoom in so if you don't want to see a hairy pit right now like please exit because it's about to go down. Okay so this is it. As you can see there are some little hairs. Uh, is that a hair? Yep that's a hair. There's some little hairs in there but you see how freaking light bright my underarm is? It has never been like this and I was like what the hell? I did not I just did not expect that but that's all that has grown back guys. I have not shaved my armpit in let me not say three weeks. I haven't shaved my armpit in like 19 days okay so we're not quite at three weeks but that regrowth are you kidding me? And that's after two sessions. That's it. Do I have chicken No. Two sessions? Get the heck out of here. Like so by far for me for sure I'm gonna say laser is the way to go if you have the right like hair and skin for it because I think like natural redheads I don't think you guys are able to get laser at least at my place they won't laser natural redheads. Very discriminatory I know but I think it's because your hair is too light and your skin is too light like for it to go I don't know I don't work there. But for me laser is definitely the way to go. I'm definitely going to keep up with these treatments and it's wonderful that you don't have to let hair regrow before you go in. I let it grow out and I'll be like oh cool 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 I'm getting a little bit of hair. It's soft. It's not as prickly. It's not all over the place. It's a lot less dense and I'll be like all right I'm just going to shave that off. Call them up. What's up? You guys got an appointment ready? Cool. I'll be in there. Sure lasering has worked out to be the absolute best. It's very easy. It's very comfortable and no one's in there like damn I gotta laser this forever. And then you know you know what I mean? Typically professionals are in fact professional. You're gonna run into some people that suck and are stupid and dumb and what are you gonna do? Um, but I would say don't give up. Just try to find a different person to do it. Not everybody sucks and all of these services have been performed by women 100% of the time for me. All right it's Q&A time and it's about that time of day where the sun pops out so just enjoy this glow on me okay. It's not really about my face so it doesn't matter what it looks like. Alyssa said do you have to wait to do the cha-cha after down there is taken care of? I would say absolutely not. There's no reason. It's you're right back to normal. There's no wait time after getting waxed, obviously, you know, shaving, etc. With the laser, same. It, no, it doesn't affect that in any way, I would say. Sarah said, are you sore after and is it worth it? I don't know that I think waxing is truly worth it. I would say laser for sure is worth it. And obviously the other hair removals are um, significantly less expensive. So I'm gonna say yes, they are worth it because they get the job. Done. Karina said, does your KP affect your post hair removal skincare? I do not get hair removed from the areas in which I have KP and as I say that that's a lie because I do have KP on my butt and my thighs and maybe that's why I get ingrowns after laser on my thighs because I have KP on my thighs. If you guys don't know what that is, it's called keratosis pilaris. It's chicken skin. That's what some people call it. And it just means that you have like clogged hair follicles. I have it all over my arms, but I don't do hair removal on my arms because it's just not that serious to me. But no, I would say that KP doesn't, 
I can't say with any certainty that it does actually affect it in any way whatsoever. Mimi said, what's the best affordable way? I would say shaving is the most affordable and best, <laughs> but if you can make laser work, I would try to make laser work. Willow Ann said, did any of them irritate your KP? I have severe dry skin and I was curious. I had no, nothing irritated my KP, made it any better or worse. Sarah said, this is a different Sarah, she said, how much will they laser in one session if you laser your entire bikini area? They laser the whole thing all at once. They'll laser your whole damn body all at once. It's just up to how much do you want lasered. Someone said, are there any tips for lightening your underarms? And like I said, the only thing, look at this light. Like I said, the only thing that lightens my underarms is lasering. Nothing else ever changed it. And that was just a fun little side effect that I had no idea would be happening. And then I had a bunch of questions about prep. What kind of prep do you do before you go? Because I work from home and I work for myself, I have a flexible schedule. And so I will always, 100% of the time, schedule my appointments early in the day. So when I was waxing, my appointment would be like me, uh, I would wake up, take a shower, get the kids ready, drop them off at school, go to my appointment. So it would be like 9 a.m. I didn't want the day. I didn't want the day down there. And yes, I have gotten waxed multiple times while on my period. I just wear a tampon and kind of, they just kind of, you know, I tuck the string, but if it's in the way, they're gonna move it. Like, we're all girls here. We all get the same thing. So I would try not to schedule it when I was gonna be on my period, but if I was, I was. And every single time when I got there, I went pee beforehand. I'd use a little wipe and that was it. So that's how I do it. When I get the laser done though, it happens to be typically around lunchtime or in the afternoon and you know, I still take a shower in the morning and I just keep myself up. If anything, I just don't want like little bits of toilet paper stuck in my crotch. So I'll just use a wipe beforehand. Just be clean. Just as a courtesy to honestly yourself and them. Okay, Nicole said, is the Kenzie worth it if you're on a budget? I would say if you're on a budget, is it worth it? It's a few hundred dollars. That's a good question. Um, if you're looking for a long time hair removal and you don't mind it taking a while and you're gonna be consistent, then sure, you can go that route and definitely use a code. I forgot what my code was. I don't know if it's still active or not. Um, but if you want long time, long term hair removal and you don't wanna have to think about it that much, I would say try to save up for a couple of laser sessions. Um, I wouldn't, if I was super, super budget conscious, I would not be doing waxing period, because it just grows back too quickly and you have to keep up with it too much and it can be expensive depending on what parts of your body you are waxing. And even though I waxed for literally six years, you guys, the hair comes back every time. What do you wear to a full Brazilian wax appointment in the winter? I wear all of my clothes, girl. Either way, you gotta take the bottoms off. Doesn't matter if you show up in a swimsuit or you show up in a snowsuit. Either way, they need full access to your bottoms. Can you do all the hair on your kitty cat, like all the nooks and crannies? Yeah, like I said, the only one that doesn't really get the little nooks and crannies like really all up in there is the laser. I could probably ask that they go a little bit further in, but again, then I gotta probably hold it open a little bit and I'm just, mm, the laser is scary. But yeah, so I get a little bit of growth there still and uh, it's not a big deal. I just, you know, whoops, whoop, quick little shave it and, and nothing but a, no big deal at all. I'm plus size and I'm a little embarrassed to get it done because I have dark spots in between my legs. They don't care. They don't care. No one's gonna open your legs and they'll be like, oh my God, ew. You know what I mean? They don't care. I have dark spots too. They don't care. Nobody cares about you, which is like uh, good to know, okay? Because I have to tell myself that all the time. <laughs> Nobody cares, Sarah, just you. Do you get arm and stomach hair? Uh, I get arm hair. It's just not enough for me to really care to remove it. And I do not really get stomach hair, so can't really be of any help there. Somebody also asked for post hygiene tips. I put on my deodorant right away after getting my armpits waxed or, uh, uh, laser or whatever like I'd be putting my deodorant right back on because your girl will be onioned up if I don't that's why I have 97 deodorants I keep them everywhere in my purse in my car in my house in my kitchen in my bathroom in your bathroom They're everywhere. I keep deodorant on deck. I don't do anything extra uh, I don't go crazy with lotions and scents and this and that I just try to let my skin do what it's gonna do And if I notice anything's getting a little bit dry or something then yeah, I add lotion But I do don't do anything special afterwards besides exfoliate I exfoliate in the shower every single day, twice a day if I take two showers. So sorry if it looks like I keep rolling my eyes, the sun is just right there. Would going for a wax for a special occasion or wedding be okay or is consistency a must? Consistency is absolutely not a must. 
I think it will help lessen the pain over time if you choose to wax consistently, but it's not a must. I will say that after coming back from, you know, early 2020 or whatever, after going to get a wax after being off of my every like four weeks hair growth, and I went back probably two to three months later or whatever, it hurt way more. It was like the hair had gotten thicker and it was just not thicker than normal, just like thicker than, you know, my every four weeks. I think it's a myth that hair grows back thicker and coarser and crazier. It, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It, my hair has literally never changed for the worse after doing anything. It just grows back how it was gonna grow back anyway. Oh, this is a good question. Tanya said, is it more expensive for plus size girls because it's more real estate? Absolutely not, okay? This is not Target charging you extra because you're a 2X instead of an XXL, all right? Absolutely not, it is the exact same cost. I have never encountered a situation or a company that is charging me more because I am bigger. No, so, you know, by that like mentality, they would be charging, you know, a size zero less than a size 12. You know what I mean? Like it's a slippery slope, girl. No, they don't charge you more just cause you're chunky. Okay, I think that was a good selection of questions there. So let's wrap this video up. If you enjoyed it, love it. I love to hear it. Feel free to let me know in the comments or give me a thumbs up. And if you guys have any additional questions of anything I might've missed, drop it in the comments. I will be down there answering questions. And if you guys have any of your own stories that you wanna add and let other people hear and see about, please put those in the comments as well because really, well, sometimes we just need a little bit of encouragement and we just need someone else to be like, oh, I'm just like you and I got this done and I did this thing and it turned out fine. Or hey, I'm just like you and I did it and I highly don't recommend. Whichever way it goes, it's just nice to hear that we're not alone in all of these things and thoughts that we think we're alone in. None of us are that special, clearly, which I kind of love. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one and uh, peace out. Bye.